In this edition of Tech It Out, how scientists use genetic tracking to beat COVID-19. A plant revived from seas thought to be about 32,000 years old. And a pair of flapping bat wings in Cosmos has been captured by the Hubble telescope. Today we look at science news ranging from prehistoric plants to an ancient mine. First, an Arctic plant has been brought back to life after 32,000 years. The seeds were found 38 meters below the Siberian permafrost. Austrian scientists believe the dry environment kept the seeds alive. They are now trying to map the genomes of the plants and they hope their research may help efforts to combat climate change. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has captured yet another stunning image. This time, it's a young star's unseen planet-forming disk casting a huge shadow across a more distant cloud in a star-forming region. The image looks like a cosmic pair of flapping bat wings. Scientists call the young star HBC 672 and the shadow feature Bat Shadow. The team speculates that a planet is embedded in the disk with an orbit inclined to the disk's plane. More than 350 elephants have died in Botswana and nobody knows why. Many of the carcasses have been found near water. There are also reports of some live elephants looking disoriented and walking in circles. Local authorities have ruled out poaching as the tusks are still in place. Botswana is home to about a third of Africa's elephant population. An ancient 11,000-year-old mine has been found in underwater caves in Mexico. The site gives a rare glimpse into the lives of some of the first residents of the Americas. It reveals where and how ancient humans extracted red ochre pigments which were prized for decoration and rituals. Experts say the caves are a time capsule with all the tools left as they were 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. This is Charles Darwin's first diagram of an evolutionary tree, finished in 1837. Ever since, it has been a cornerstone of analysis on everything that involves, and viruses are no exception. As scientists around the world try to beat COVID-19, some are looking back to identify patterns in viral evolution and spreading. So just how to track them down? Viruses involved by mutating. Mutation is a little bit like the game of telephone or Chinese whispers. Players pass on a simple word such as name one to another. The more times it pass on, the more likely it is to be misheard or misinterpreted. As soon as this happens, the word can never go back to the original. So it could, for instance, go from name to fame to five and so on. This is pretty much how a virus mutates. Think of its genetic materials as a sequence of letters, and some of them can change over time. Scientists are doing whole genome sequences of the virus in order to know how they might look over time. Then what they need to do is to find out how the virus has most likely involved. Let me show you how they do this. For example, we have four virus samples acquired from four different patients. RNA sequencing allows us to locate the genetic differences among those samples. Well, let's say it turns out like this. Sample A and B share the same mutations. C and D have mutations in unique spots, though C has two spots identical to A and B, which makes C genetically closer to A and B than D does. And you may also observe that mutations in some spots just show up more frequently than others. For example, all four viruses share the same mutation in the same position, suggesting that this mutation might belong to the common ancestor of all four. Based on those principles, scientists can build up a genetic tree for those four samples. Apparently, A and B are genetically identical, coming from the same family. For C, 
it is closely related to A and B, though it looks slightly different than them at a green spot. But D is a bit like a distance relative. It has a unique mutation at a purple spot and only shares a remote common ancestor with A, B, and C. It's not over. Scientists will organize samples on the tree according to the date and location they were taken to show the bigger picture of virus evolution and transmission. It will like this. When scientists understand how the virus has evolved and when and where cases have originated, they can figure out the transmission chain where patients will show up in the same cluster due to the genetic similarity of the viruses that infect them. Now you may ask, wouldn't it be great if we could have more sequences of viral genomes like that, so we could finish this puzzle? You're right. During these dark moments for humanity, it is encouraging to see so many scientific institutions around the world sharing their viral genomes. With more cases, you can imagine how big and detailed this chart could become. This is just a simple demonstration where only four samples have been included. And this is how a transmission chain looks like, based on more than 5,200 samples. So what does genetic tracking tell us about this new coronavirus? First, it is mutating at a relatively slow pace compared with, say, seasonal flu. It seems to have a mutation rate of less than 25 mutations per year. Seasonal flu has almost 50 mutations per year. So this is the good news. Fast changers like flu can easily invade a vaccine. So this new virus gives us more time to develop a long-lasting vaccine. Second, the earliest viral samples from Wuhan contain relatively few genetic variations. Most of them are what scientists call the L-type. Research published in the peer-reviewed Cell Scientific Journal speculated that the novel coronavirus hasn't experienced too many mutations because the cryptic transmission of virus took place in human society before the outbreak in Wuhan. In addition, it also highlighted the remarkable job public health authorities in Wuhan did to control the first cluster of cases. Their strict physical distancing measure put a lot of pressure on the virus, preventing it from mutating and becoming more aggressive.